Let's be honest. When you drink a cola, whether it's Coca-Cola, Pepsi, or a random store brand version, you instantly recognize that signature flavor. But if someone asked you what flavor is cola really, you might pause. It's not exactly cherry, though that might be in there. It's not just caramel. It's definitely not citrus like orange or lemon. So what is it? Why does cola taste the way it does? And how did it become one of the most iconic flavors in the world? In today's episode, we're peeling back the label on that dark fizzy mystery we call cola. It turns out, cola flavor isn't just one thing. It's a symphony of ingredients, history, and even a bit of secrecy. And once you learn what actually goes into that unmistakable taste, you may never sip a cola the same way again. So let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand cola flavor, we have to go back to the 1880s in the American South. The original recipe for Coca-Cola was invented by a pharmacist named John Stith Pemberton. He created it as a medicinal tonic, something to help with headaches and fatigue. And it really was cola flavored back then because it included extracts from the cola nut, a caffeine-rich nut from West Africa. The cola nut gave the drink both its name and its energizing kick. But the real twist? The original formula also contained coca leaf extract, the same plant used to make cocaine. Yep, early versions of Coca-Cola had both caffeine and cocaine, making it quite the pick-me-up. Of course, modern colas contain no cocaine, and many don't even use real cola nut anymore. But the name stuck. And so did the mysterious flavor. Cola flavor is actually a carefully blended mixture of several ingredients that, when combined, produce that uniquely recognizable taste. At its core, cola is a combination of citrus oils, spice notes, sweeteners, and vanilla. It's less like a single flavor and more like a well-balanced recipe. Here's the breakdown. First, the citrus. Most colas contain essential oils from oranges, lemons, and limes. Not the juice, just the oil from the peels. This adds brightness and gives cola its slightly zesty undertone. It's subtle, but if you really focus while sipping, you can taste that citrus snap right at the edge of your tongue. Then come the spices. Think cinnamon, nutmeg, and sometimes clove. These give the flavor its warmth and depth. They're what make cola feel cozy and familiar, almost like a spiced dessert in a glass. Next is vanilla. This is a big one. Vanilla acts as a unifier. It smooths out the other flavors and rounds off the sharper edges. Without it, cola would probably taste a bit too chaotic. Add to that some caramel for color and sweetness, and you start to see the full picture. Cola is less like a fruit soda and more like a perfume. It's layered, complex, and carefully tuned to hit a lot of different taste receptors all at once. One of the reasons cola flavor is so hard to describe is because the companies behind it want it that way. Coca-Cola in particular is famous for its secret formula, supposedly kept in a vault and known by only a few people at a time. Whether or not that's entirely true, the mystery is part of the brand. The secrecy creates an aura, and that has helped cola feel more magical and less like just a mix of citrus and spice. But researchers and flavor chemists over the years have tried to reverse engineer the formula. One leaked recipe dubbed Merchandise 7X is believed to contain ingredients like alcohol, orange oil, lemon oil, nutmeg oil, coriander, neroli, and cinnamon. And yes, coriander and neroli are not what you'd expect in a soft drink, but they contribute to that floral, almost exotic note that you can't quite put your finger on when drinking cola. Still, even with that knowledge, the exact proportions and processing methods are what really define the final taste. 
So unless you're blending your own batch in a flavor lab, getting an exact replica is close to impossible. Modern colas vary widely in how they're flavored. Some use natural extracts, while others rely on artificial flavoring that mimics the original blend. And depending on where in the world you're drinking it, the recipe might be slightly different. For example, cola in the U.S. is often sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, while in many other countries like Mexico or parts of Europe, it's still made with cane sugar. The sweetener changes the mouthfeel and overall flavor in subtle but noticeable ways. That's why Mexican Coke is so popular. It has a cleaner, slightly less syrupy taste, which some people prefer. There are also caffeine-free versions, diet colas, zero-sugar blends, and even natural or organic colas. But the one thing they all strive to keep intact is that core flavor profile that dance of citrus, spice, vanilla, and sweetness that makes it unmistakably cola. Of course, Coca-Cola isn't the only game in town. Pepsi has its own interpretation of cola flavor, slightly sweeter and more citrus forward. Then there are hundreds of store brand versions and offshoots like RC Cola, each with their own twist. Some taste flatter, others sharper. Some go heavier on spice, while others lean more on vanilla or lemon. Yet all of them are trying to hit that same nostalgic nerve, the taste that says, yep, this is cola. It's remarkable how consistent that baseline flavor has remained, even as recipes and sweeteners evolve. The world might change, but cola flavor stays comfortingly familiar. So, what really is cola flavor? It's not one thing. It's a carefully choreographed blend of citrus oils, warm spices, vanilla smoothness, sweet syrup, and bubbles. It doesn't come from a single fruit or plant, but from a century of experimentation, secrecy, and marketing genius. It's a flavor built not just in bottles, but in memories. We don't just taste cola, we feel it. And maybe that's why no matter how many brands come and go, cola still holds a unique spot in our taste buds and in our hearts. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.